Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Sure is. We are following breaking news happening at this moment in Georgia. Former President Donald Trump has indeed been indicted on state charges stemming from his efforts to overturn his 2020 electoral defeat in the state of Georgia. The 98 page indictment is the fourth criminal case the former president is now facing. 18 other people have been indicted in connection to the case. Prosecutors have been looking into an alleged scheme to overturn the 2020 presidential election results in Georgia, a state Trump narrowly lost. The former president has denied any wrongdoing. All right. Obviously, more much on. more to come on that. <laughs> it is, again, the it just being released here within the last uh, seven or eight minutes or so. We'll continue mm -hmm. to update that story throughout this next newscast. All right. Our other top story tonight is the weather. Forewarned weather team tracking a flood watch that could make things messy for your morning commute. Thanks for joining us, everybody. I'm Kimberly Gill. I'm Devin Skilly. Let's start things off here at 11 with Kim Adams. Uh, some areas have already seen some really heavy rains tonight, Kim. Absolutely over an inch of rain in some spots and even though we haven't had the severe thunderstorms, we are still dealing with situations that will lead to some problems with your morning commute. There's already ponding on the roadways. We're already seeing some flooding in a few spots uh, back out to the west. We still have some to go through. So Lansing, Battle Creek, Grand Rapids all have some moderate to even heavy rainfall. So the entire area right now under that flood watch. Here's what we're expecting by tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. When you head to work, there'll be at least an inch to maybe even as much as an inch and a half of water on the ground of rain on the ground. So that is going to cause a little bit of flooding, especially on the freeways. Those overpasses, you know, underneath they do flood, especially in the outer lanes. So that could slow things down for your morning commute. By the time it's all said and done and that watch expires, we expect anywhere from and this is in addition to the inch we've had right now. We expect at least another inch and a half to inch and three quarters, especially south of I-94. And that's why the National Weather Service did put out that flood watch it goes from uh, it started at eight o'clock tonight, goes all the way through four o'clock tomorrow. Best way to know what's happening in your hometown is to go and download the 41 weather app. If you haven't already done this, this is just an invaluable tool during situations like this because you'll get pinpoint accuracy right down to your house. So go to your favorite app store and type in WDIV. New at 11. The only thing I ever heard the pilot say was, I hope we didn't kill anyone. New tonight, witnesses jump into action after two pilots ejected from a fighter that crashed near Ypsilanti. The thunder over Michigan Air Show came to an abrupt stop Sunday afternoon after the crash. Investigators say engine failures are to blame for this Cold War Russian fighter jet crash. Fortunately, the pilots on board ejected from the plane before it crashed. Amazingly, those pilots only suffered non-life-threatening injuries. Pamela Osborne spoke with the people who helped rescue the pilot and co-pilot. This is a story that's really taken on a life of its own all day on Monday. People drove here to where we are right now to take a look at this wreckage for themselves. Among them, the pilot. Yeah, he was out here in a back brace speaking to investigators as they comb through this debris, which they're moving right now. Tonight, we spoke with the two men who helped pull that pilot and his co-pilot out of the lake. Crazy. It's super close to the, house, the apartment. I don't know how it didn't hit it. Bailey Driffer still cannot believe his eyes. He'd only been watching for about 15 minutes when the pilots and co pilot ejected overhead. We saw the parachute, they landed right past us. He picked up his phone and started recording. But he sprung right into action instantly. Right when the dude hit the water, he came flying right into him, picked him up, saved him. We found the man behind the wheel of that boat. His name is Mark Duff. He was trying to get his uh, things off and tread water and I, I grabbed him and he said, thank you. I felt like I was going under. Duff helped the co-pilot onto his boat as Charlie Rowell and his friends were doing the same thing on the other side of Belleville Lake. I didn't stay long enough to watch the, the airplane actually go down. We just said we're going right now. Their so boat we, transported the pilot to safety. He was visibly shaken. Um, I think physically he was in, in good shape. He says his biggest concern was where the plane landed and if anyone was hurt. Monday, the pilot got an up-close look at where his plane landed for himself. 
think it's absolutely remarkable that nobody on the lake or on the ground or even the pilots themselves were seriously hurt or injured. It's, to me, it's, it's a miracle. Call it a miracle, call it what you want. It, it's, it's amazing that, that uh, everyone was safe. We do want to give you an up close look at some activity that we've noticed within the past hour, hour and a half. A tow truck arrived here on the scene. They were looking at that wreckage and have started pulling it apart and putting it onto the bed of that truck. Now we know investigators, federal investigators are looking into this crash, but it could take up to two years to determine exactly what went wrong with that plane. People who witnessed this accident, people who have been looking at the videos online, certainly appreciative, grateful that no one else was injured, except for those pilots who suffered minor injuries. I'm Pamela Osborne, Local 4. Okay, Pamela, thank you. After a memo announcing a format change last Friday, which caught the entire on-air staff off guard, now claims are being made the former AM 910 Superstation Urban Talk format is heading in an entirely different direction. Mar McDonald is live downtown tonight. Mar, the flip was made to a sports radio format. Kimberly, that's right, but there's all sorts of hubbub tonight that that sports format is not for the long haul. Let me show you. AM 910, the Superstation, has at times hosted a controversial lineup. Those who have rolled through, including Monica Conyers, Christine Beatty, Joel Jones, Sam Riddle, and Judge Wade McCree, alongside hosts without that kind of notoriety. It catered primarily to an urban audience, and as of last Friday, the current lineup, including Detroit News columnist Benkele Thompson, were told it was over with zero warning. Well-known yeah. political consultant Adolph Mongo, who at one time had a show on 910, yeah. says that's Taking wholly unsurprising. He lies. He uh, disrespect people. He's a sexist. He's a racist. And you know what? Can't believe a word that he uh, uh, says. AM 910 is owned by Kevin Adele, who also owns the Word Network and recently sold WADL TV. He's been in the crosshairs of the feds who are after him for millions in taxes. They say he owes. He's fighting it in court. This format change from urban talk to sports radio has left a lot of bad feelings in the African American community. And now there are emails out there claiming the sports format is a precursor until a state goes the conservative talk radio format. He, he got something in mind and I wouldn't be surprised he he go to the ultra right. If that is indeed what happens with this station. They need to boycott it. They need to boycott any advertiser that uh, buy any airtime on 910. Back here live, when I reached out to Adele's spokesman this afternoon and specifically asked about a switch to conservative talk format, I was told at this point Adele has switched to sports and that's really all they're going to say about it right now. Interesting to note in those emails that are floating around, it alleges that that switch is going to happen Labor Day weekend. We're downtown. I'm Mara McDonald. Local four. Okay, Mara, keep us posted. Thank you. New tonight, President Biden putting pressure on the UAW and the big three automakers one month ahead of the deadline in labor talks. President urging both sides to work together and reach a fair agreement. White House has been uh, closely monitoring the talks, we're told. Both sides reportedly far apart, though, right now in their negotiations. The union is demanding significant pay raises of at least 40% to match the pay increases of chief executive officers of Ford, General Motors, and still that they've made over the past four years. The union says it is making plans for a strike authorization vote. Tonight, extra search crews and additional cadaver dogs are combing through devastated burn areas in Hawaii and recovering any remains they find. The death toll currently stands at 99 and is expected to rise, while the search for those possibly trapped continues. Officials will begin revealing the names of some of the deceased tomorrow. Investigators have not yet determined the fire's exact cause, but a lawsuit related to the potential cause was filed today. As of now, the wildfires are about 85% contained. 20 years ago today, the lights went out for 50 million people. You probably remember where you were at that moment. The 2003 Northeast blackout stretched across eight states and Canada. More than 100 power plants were shut down. 
Hospitals, prisons forced to operate on backup generators. Most had sporadic phone service, no lights, no air conditioning in the summer heat. Our Will Jones took a look back at this day and we posted his report on our website at clickondetroit.com.